venting is not as helpful as we actually think. So a lot of us think, okay, something bad happened. I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm sad. I'm going to go vent to a friend or a loved one. And that's the way to make myself feel better. And that's the best kind of psychological thing I can do. And it's really great that we have people that we can talk to and we can help each other and we can be there for each other. That part of venting is good to have that level of connection and to feel connected to another person. But venting is what we call emotion-focused coping. So you're not actually solving the problem that you have this strong emotion as a result of. What you're solving is the emotion. So let's say you're really angry at your manager, your boss, whatever. And you go and you vent to your partner about how awful they are. And you vent and you vent and you're angry and your partner's angry with you and it feels good in the moment. And then that emotion subsides. You feel less angry. Like you've released the anger, your partner was angry with you, and now you feel better. So emotion-focused coping, right? So you fixed the emotion. And this is the problem with venting, is that oftentimes because we vent, we never actually fix the root cause of the problem. So what could the root cause of the problem be here? Well, you could be working in a toxic environment that no matter what you do will never support your psychological needs and you all the like psychology in the world couldn't make you well in that environment. That's a possibility. Maybe you have some core beliefs or some childhood schemas in your mind that make you hypersensitive to certain things. That's something that you could work on in therapy. That's a potential root problem as well, like a root cause problem. And so these two just ideas of what the actual root cause are, are things that you can actually fix and you would have to take action to fix them. So that's actually a problem-focused coping strategy. You're actually fixing the problem, not fixing the emotion. And so if you're constantly using venting as a strategy, then you might want to rethink it because what happens is the emotions are actually really important for us. So we don't actually want to diffuse all of these negative emotions like the way people think we should. And nowadays, everyone thinks that we need to diffuse negative emotions and we need to do that by venting or we need to do that by some other emotion focused coping mechanism like relaxation or whatever. Or we need to just avoid like we need to just watch Netflix and avoid the emotion. The problem is, is that in this particular scenario, this anger is trying to tell you something. Like, it's trying to help you. The mind isn't running anger just to make your life miserable. The mind is detecting something and telling you, hey, you're you're being taken advantage of or you perceive being taken advantage of. So it could be one of the two, like and a trained psychologist or therapist will be able to differentiate this for you because the problem is that oftentimes we don't know if we're the problem or the environment is the problem. And sometimes we can be the problem. Oftentimes it's a little bit of both. So there are extremely, extremely toxic environments and I don't want to discount that because those are very common in the workplace. But at the same time, most of us show up at work with all kinds of baggage, all kinds of wounds, all kinds of ways that we're perceiving interactions in ways that are not helping us. We're hurting ourselves as well because of the history that we've had in our lives, because of the instances we've had in our lives that have damaged our mind in such a way that now we perceive more danger than actually exists or more kind of malintent than actually exists. And that can be fixed. That can be improved on through therapy, through working with someone like myself. So what did we learn from this? That yes, connecting with others, having someone support you is a beautiful thing, but be careful about getting rid of your negative emotions because they are very much there to help you. And you can think of it kind of like um, you don't want to turn off a smoke alarm in your home because those are there to help you. They're there to tell you when there's a fire. And so the anger is telling you, hey, there's a fire. Something's not right here. Either maybe the way I perceive the world isn't right, or I'm in an extremely toxic environment that is 
damaging me and I need to plan how to get out of this because it's never going to improve. Because all of these emotion-focused coping mechanisms, the venting, is just kind of like this surface band-aid solution that you put on and you hope for the best, but the next week the same thing happens and you're just like repeating the same cycle over and over again and you don't want that for your life. You want to actually make changes, you want to make progress, you want to fix your real problems so that this doesn't repeat, that you don't have to deal with this on a weekly basis. So I hope that helps. And um, I would like to just note that I don't mean that you shouldn't go to people and ask for support and ask for help, but you should just be aware that when you're venting, you're using an emotion focused coping mechanism and you're diminishing an emotion that might be trying to help you.